Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Buenas. Undanklo na si Jesus Masi para hamdu torus ni mangaygi kuni. Penpega i confession mizu i principal meti i kandidato para director i Department of Public Works. Before we start with this confirmation hearing, I I would like to just kind of just put out some of the administrative announcement that I wanted to do. Uh, it's, it's, it merits that, uh, you know, before we do this, we have to acknowledge what needs to be done because, you know, after this, we have to do some, you know, paperwork to make sure that this confirmation goes through right quickly. And um, before we start, I, I please, if you're going to uh, make your testimony, please make sure that you signed in. And if you're going to submit a written testimony, Either you read it here or you, or you, you send it to my address, uh, and I'll present my address later on. Uh, before we start also, I want to recognize the former speaker of the legislature, uh, Mr. Joaquin Ariola, the father of the principal. <laughs> I want to recognize the, the wife of the principal, uh, Teresa Ariola. Thank you very much. I also want to recognize the De Deputy Director of the Department of Public Works, uh, Mr. Garcia. And I wa want to recognize all of you here for having that interest to, to make sure that, uh, you know, we support our, uh, the principal. Thank you very much. Uh, let me just uh, kind of introduce uh, the senators that are here today, this morning. Um, Senator Bisculi on my left. Like <laughs> half a day. <laughs> and also Senator Morris Titano on my right. <laughs> Usually what, uh, you know, if anybody's going to present testimonies, right, you can take your seat up front. And also, Vince, I want to probably ask you to speak also first before anybody else. And those that are giving testimony this morning, go, go ahead and join uh, Vince. I know we do have a sign-in seat here, but usually I would go from the left to the right or the right to the left, whichever. I want to recognize Mr. Martinez, the former deputy uh, manager of the airport. Thank you. Thank you, Pari. Buenas, <laughs> Samjutoros. This confirmation hearing by the Committee on Public Safety, Border Safety, Military and Veterans Affairs, Mayor's Council of Guam, Infrastructure, Public Public transit is hereby, hereby called to order. For the record and in accordance with section 8107 of chapter 8 to 5 GCA, the first confirmation hearing notice was sent out on April 25th, 2019, adhering to the five working days notice and the second uh, confirmation notice adhering to the 48 hours was sent out Wednesday, May 1st, 2019. And in addition to this confirmation, or this confirmation hearing was given to the legislature notice on website. The time now is On the agenda this morning is the executive appointment of Mr. Vince P. Ariola to serve as the Director of Public Works. And we're going to start with, the, uh, with Vince first. And then to my left, to your right. And then we'll go from there to your left. We go that way, OK? So, so, so go ahead, uh, Vince. Thank you very much for 
for uh, taking the challenge <coughs> to thank accept much, this uh, confirmation. Yes, thank you very much, Senator. Good morning. And uh, also good morning to the other uh, members of your distinguished committee. Good morning, Senators. I'm very pleased to appear before you and other Senators for my confirmation hearing as the Director of the Department of Public Works. Before I begin, please allow me to publicly thank Governor Lou Leon Guerrero and Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio for their confidence and leadership in appointing myself to this highly important position within our government. I am honored to serve in this position. Senators, I am here today to let you know I am prepared, capable, and qualified to serve as the director. It's a challenging job. There's so much to do and much needed improvements we can contribute to our island. To do this, I believe it's a matter of how much passion we have for our island, how far we are willing to work to better our island, and how we as a community determine our direction. This administration has pledged safer and improved roadways and village streets, a newer fleet of modern and safe school buses, improved village street lighting, better drainage from rainstorms, and increased protection of our natural resources, specifically our oceans, our rivers, and our aquifer. And at the forefront of these issues, and many more, is the Department of Public Works. DPW is the most visible GovGuam department on this island. Everywhere you look, everywhere you go, there is a connection to DPW. As an example, DPW is responsible for just some of the following. 166 plus miles of primary roads and road shoulders. 800 plus miles of secondary roads, streets, and public easements. 50 plus bridges and culverts. 115 ponding basins. 600 plus bus shelters. 170 plus school buses transporting thousands of our students on school days. Maintenance of all our government owned buildings. Over 15,000 public street lights. All government funded capital improvement projects. The review and issuance of building permits. Reviewing building plans for homes, commercial buildings, hotels, warehouses. Ensuring that buildings and structures conform to current laws and building codes the maintenance of hundreds of government of vehicles. And just recently, within the last couple of years, compliance with federal mandates for our coral pit in Dedido and compliance with federal mandates for our ponding basins, our outfalls, and our rivers. These are just a few of the major responsibilities the department is faced with. This is a huge task with a little over 270 employees. I may stand corrected, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe there was a line of individuals waiting up at Adaloop to be appointed the next director here. <laughs> I'm here. I can do this. Having said this, this is what I hope to accomplish short and midterm as the new director at the department. Primarily, of course, would, would be the funding. Plan to seek additional funding and resources to include local funding, federal government funding, federal and private grants, business partnerships, and community sponsorships. I know full well, having been at DOA, I know the cash issues that this government is facing, the revenue issues this government is facing, and at Public Works and general government agencies as well. We just have to think outside the, outside the box and look for additional resources to keep this government running. Training, employees should be trained at all levels. Professional disciplines, technical studies, transportation issues, legal, administrative, clerical, and of course, customer service. Professional and intensive training and education for our employees leads to improve efficiencies, better outcomes, and hopefully cost savings. Maintenance, that is the number one word when it comes to DPW and overall GovGuam. Everyone seems to say the entire government of Guam never pays attention to maintenance. Well, at DPW, we are going to establish strict maintenance and performance standards throughout the agency, beginning with a maintenance for vehicles, equipment, roads, road shoulders and guardrails, bus stops, government buildings, and the like. Community partnerships. We need to strengthen and improve our relationship with our mayors, other government agencies, our business community, and of course our military partners. Road paving. Having been on the outside of DPW, Looking in, our road pavement just does not seem to last for any reasonable amount of time. We need to find the right mix, the right ingredients, 
the right application for future road paving projects, especially on our primary roads and intersections. The same holds true for road repair. The old practice of shoveling cold mix asphalt into a pothole has to end. There are newer technologies and products available to perform quality road repairs. Municipal separate storm sewer system, better known as MS4. Federal compliance requires the implementation of a storm water management program to control discharges and pollutants entering our rivers, ocean, and aquifers. This is, we're in about the 10th or 12th month into this. The U.S. Department of Labor, Mine Safety and Health Administration, better known as the MSHA, a review was, was conducted at our coral pit in Dedido a couple of years back. The heavy equipment that is being used there does not comply with MHA, MH, MSHA standards, and so we must procure new equipment and utilize new equipment. Basically, the equipment there is open air. The new equipment has to be air conditioned because of the dust and safety factors. Additionally, securing and protecting the entire site must take place for obvious safety reasons. Senators, these are just some of the issues that I wish to lead, direct, and have accomplished at the department. There are many other issues related to the island's growth, economic stability, and government resources that the department will eventually be faced with. This will be addressed with the proper leadership and planning from within our government, our business community, and our island residents. There are good, hardworking employees at DPW. The agency is also very fortunate to have Mr. Jesse Garcia as the deputy director. He is seasoned, having worked there previously, and well-versed in most, if not all, operational aspects of the de department. My job as director would be to get the most productivity and efficiency out of each and every one of our employees and have them function as one team, one unit, one professional organization in this government. In closing, it would be a privilege to continue my public service at the Department of Public Works. The future for our island is promising, as our Governor Leon Guerrero stated earlier. I would be honored to be an important part of this island's direction, future, and success. I humbly request your support for my nomination. Jesus Masi, thank you. Jesus Masi, Vince. I also want to recognize uh, Mr. Robert Lizama, the former mayor of uh, Jigo. And I guess Robert is here as a rep, uh, representative uh, from the governor's office. And you did mention Vince. I want to thank the governor also and the lieutenant governor, governor for making that right choice because I know you're the right choice. And you had mentioned that there's nobody else in the governor's office that would take over the job. So <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we'll start from, from my left here. Um, go ahead. Senator, uh, I put this on here. Senator, I was actually here for uh, testimony in support of uh, Mr. Benevente, although I'd like to lean my support for you as well, Mr. Ariel, <laughs> after listening to your, uh, your commentary. You. But that's the primary reason I was here. So. Uh, but anyway, good speech, and uh, hopefully you can meet those, uh, those criteria. Uh, although I will say one thing since I'm up here, um, the mention about the roads and the condition of the roads, you know, I've been, um, I used to live here in Guam for many years, and I've been off island for about 17 years. I just came back last year, and I will say the same potholes and the same ripple over there in the Gany Heights are there. So uh, I agree with your assessment that needs to be addressed because that's a real issue for us local people. So. Okay, that was it for me. I'll come back up for Mr. Benevente. Thank you. Thank you very much. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Uh, Deputy Manager before of the airport. Go ahead, buddy. Good, thank you, and good morning, Senators. And I just have a brief remark also for my good friend here, Vincent. Buenas and alpha day, Senator Pidu, uh, Terlahi, and members of the committee, Senator uh, Gene and Mars, Senator Mars. Uh, my name is Peter Roy Martinez. I'm here in support of Vincent uh, Ariola's appointment as the new director for DPW. I have known Vincent for many years, matter of fact, sometimes too long, on a professional and a personal level. From 1997, thank you. 
From 1997 to 2003, Vincent was the general manager for the Guam Telephone Authority, which at that time was a government agency preparing for privatization. I was a member and chairman of GTA Board of Directors from 1997 to 2002. It was during this period that I got to know him better and to observe his management style. I found him to be a well-respected, committed, and hardworking general manager who was open-minded and was always ready to take on a challenge. He was well-versed on the entire operation of the agency, its finances, and Federal Communications Commission's policies and procedures. He kept the Board of Directors informed of pertinent matters and was always prepared for our board meetings. Vincent worked and communicated well with the employees as well as the board. As you know, GTA officially became a part of the private sector in, in December 31st, 2004. You can depend on Vince to lend a hand when needed. I had an opportunity to work with him in preparing the strategic plans, goals, and objectives of the Father Duenas Memorial School Endowment Foundation. He was very knowledgeable and instrumental in the completion of this project. As an alumni of Father Duenas Memorial School, class of 1974, Vince is very active and supportive of the Father Duenas Alumni Association. You can be sure of his presence at events to benefit the school or at functions for the Alumni Association. During the annual FD Alumni Basketball Tournament, you can always find him at the bleachers, cheering on his classmates, and just having a great time with all the other alumni, young or old. Vincent is a longtime friend, as I mentioned earlier. There are so many words that I can use to describe him. Courteous, trustworthy, caring, fair, understanding, compassionate, practical, firm, and friendly, patient, religious, and a family man. He is truly all of these. I humbly ask that you confirm Vincent as the director for DPW with his work ethics, experience, and wealth of knowledge, I know that he would do well with DPW. Thank you for the opportunity to come before your committee and this legislature to express my support for Vincent Ariola. Jesus Masi. Jesus Masi, Peter Roy. <laughs> At this time, I want to allow uh, my colleague, uh, Senator Biscoli to uh, address some of the questions that she wanted to ask the principal. Is there anybody else that want to present testimonies? A testimony? Okay, go ahead, Senator. Thank you. Situs Masi, Mr. Chair, and Hafidi, everyone, welcome to your Guam Congress building. I also want to take the time to thank our Governor, Mega Hagalu, for nominating you. Uh, Mr. Ariola, I want to thank you and your family for accepting the governor's nomination. I know it's a really big job, and I know that you are equal to the task. Um, I also want to thank you for your work, your hard work, and your dedication, and the planning of restoring us to this building and bringing back this building to life. So I really want to thank you for all your work in that. It was an honor. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator Lee. Thank you. Uh, at this oh, time, I'm sorry, I have, I have uh, a few you're questions. Not, oh, no, yes. no, I'm really not done yet. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Please. I think it was uh, interesting that uh, someone 
before you had mentioned that you never step away from, the from a challenge. And in all my years that I've known you my entire life, I've known that to be true. Um, there are a couple of things that were listed in the governor's transition report. Yes, um, and I know that you are privy to all that information. So I wanted to just ask you um, uh, three questions on, those, on the transition report. So under number eight on the transition report with regard to DPW, um, the governor's transition team talked about building permits and what a challenge it's been um, to just kind of get that whole mess in line. So I wanted to ask you, um, in, in the transition report, they noted that there were only three building inspectors for the entire government of Guam. So I wanted to ask you, how many building inspe inspectors are there currently, and when will additional support be provided? Yes. Thank you, Senator. We, uh, we just picked up another um, building inspector. Uh, I think to get the full force, we, we need a, a total of six. Um, one of the things in the transition report uh, is, is, of course, we're, is to automate the, the building uh, inspection and building uh, permit center. Um, but, you know, everyone has to understand, and, and I, I've already been, been faced with it, uh, individuals, companies, uh, construction companies, corporations coming in with their building permits. I know how long it takes to, to, to put together uh, uh, draft plans, architectural drawings and plans, for a, say, a commercial building or even a building of this size. It, it takes well over a year. Uh, and typically they come in and they want to get the, whole, the plans done and approved within 10 days or two weeks. That just is not going to happen. Uh, there's, there's building codes, there's local building codes, there's national building codes, and there's professional building codes that we have to review. In, in the end, the liability falls on DPW. And if my signature is going to go on any of those permits or the, 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 the permit, the uh, administrator, Mr. Joe Guevara, if his signature is going to go on any of those permits, we're going to make sure that everything follows code. And to do that, we have to do a thorough and complete analysis. I can understand the, 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 the request out there to move things as fast as we can, and we will, you know. Uh, I think a lot of that is just to get a, additional personnel so that we can, in fact, review them. Uh, I think a, 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 one of the uh, issues that we're, we're, we're able to address is we'll be bringing on a new chief engineer. He's scheduled to start June 1st. Excellent. So that's going to help us quite a bit. Uh, so are we going to address that? Absolutely. Yeah. But, but still, keep in mind, you know, and I've got a couple of lawyers behind me and I've learned the big L word. That's liability. Mm -hmm. Before my signature goes on anything in that department, I'm going to make sure it's perfect or darn perfect. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the update. But also, you know, I think it's important to address the island's growing need along Absolutely. with the importance for safety of our, the mm -hmm. public. So thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the, one other thing that was mentioned in the transition report was the one-stop permitting centers. Um, automation of all functions have been, has been unsuccessful in previous years and past attempts have, have turned up negative. So I just wanted to ask you or give you an opportunity to remark on that and what can be done or what is being done to kind of streamline and automate that process, the permitting process. Yes, thank you. That, very good question. I, I think uh, some of the issues that have happened also is, you know, individuals get involved with the, with the permitting process and then they either leave or they transfer and there's no succession plan. Uh, that has to happen. Uh, I mentioned in my testimony training for employees. Uh, that, that has to be strict. That has to be complied with. Uh, and, and that's the only way we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna move forward. Um, we're in the year 2019, almost 2020, and some of the, um, the technologies that we have at DPW are so old, it's, 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 um, it's pretty surprising. So, you know, absolutely, are, are we going to go after... Uh, uh, updating our, 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 our processes, our technology, and so on and so forth. Absolutely, we have to. We're, we're, we're way behind the, the times, if you will. Thank you. Um, so we covered building permits, one-stop permitting center. I also wanted to talk with you a little bit about school bus safety. Mm -hmm. um, you've seen several incidences in the past few months where we've had challenges in that area, and so I just wanted to give you an opportunity to inform the committee and the public who might be watching any plans that you have to address that. Yeah. I think the, the, the issue with school bus safety is, is really just a matter of additional school buses and a, additional school bus drivers. Um, right now, to, to be at a, at a 
comfortable operational level for school bus um, transportation, we need an additional 80 school buses and 80 school bus drivers. That's a tall order. Each school bus costs about $115,000 to $120,000. Each school bus driver starts at about 20, maybe twenty-six, twenty-seven thousand a year. So you do the math. That's 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 a heavy load. Right now, some of the school buses are do are most, if not all, the school buses are doing double routes. So in other words, they start so early in the morning, they drop off those kids, and they go, they do another route. Some are doing triple routes. Um, so that, that, that leads to safety issues as well. So the bottom line is, you know, and I mentioned it there, we need to be, we need to think outside the box. We need to go and look at additional grants. We need to talk with the feds. We need to find money to buy more school buses and hire more school bus drivers. It's, it, it's a tall order, but uh, we're going to get on it. Will this also be included in your budget that you submit? Uh, that might be as, a, as an add-on to the budget. Yeah. Okay, I understand. Um, my last question, Mr. Chair, if I may, um, have the appropriate DPW staff completed the mandatory procurement modules required by law? I know that we have had issues in the past about um, costly protests, and so I just want to make sure that DPW is on the right track. And some, some have taken the models, not all of them, and that goes back again to my training. Again, having been at DOA uh, with GSA directly under my wing, I, I, know, I know the processes and I know the, the problems and the issues that have arisen. And if I, I'll, I'll say it for the record, I have told the staff, I have told the management at DPW, we will not have any lapses for any fiscal year that I am there. We will not return any federal funds. We will spend every single penny that comes to DPW. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I know that you mentioned in your, in your testimony you want to increase community partnerships, you want to improve our street mm -hmm. lights, um, safer roads, and I'll just leave you with this. I think um, in, you were talking a little bit about road paving, how that's a constant challenge for us. I've seen on the internet, I don't know how well it might work here on Guam, but the fact that they might be able to use recycled plastic pellets, um, and I know that the first dude is really jazzed up about recycling. So if we're able to maybe convert some of our plastic recycling waste into plastic pellets that we could use for road construction and filling our potholes, I'm not sure again about withstanding the island's heat and all of the special kind of weather conditions here on Guam. But if that's something you could look into, that would certainly make me really happy. Senator, and I think a lot of people's cars and their tires and yeah, all of those yeah. things, so. Senator, when, when you're in the hospital for four weeks, <laughs> <laughs> you become a YouTube junkie, and that's where I did a lot of my work. Right. I found a lot, of, a lot of equipment, a lot of products that we are not using today that we really should be using. Well, on roads. that note, I really want to um, take the opportunity to thank our doctors and nurses at GMH. I'm really glad that you are here and that um, I'm able to tell you that I fully support your confirmation, and Appreciate I thank it. you so much for answering my questions. Thank you so thank much, you. Senator. Thank you very much, Senator Lee. Uh, this time I want to allow our Senator uh, Mars Titano to uh, go ahead and do your questions. Morning, Senator. Suzu <laughs> Smasi, uh, Chair, and uh, Manana Sizu is to everybody here. This is a rather full um, hearing room, so that's very good to see. It's always good to see family out in support. So. Uh, that's very nice as well. And I just want to mention, I have known the Ariola family for quite some years. I've known Vince um, in his capacities for quite a few years, and I know that he has devoted his life to public service, um, following in a family tradition of sorts, right? Maybe filling mm. in some different positions, but um, that is a family tradition of sorts. And in whatever position I've seen him hold, he's always embraced it energetically um, and with a passion and he deeply cares about what he is doing. And so I think those are all excellent skills that he's bringing with him to DPW. We need some energy, some new energy into DPW. We need somebody who deeply cares about these things. As you mentioned in your testimony, there's a lot to tackle. Uh, thousands of street lights, um, hundreds of, well, a hundred uh, or more of 
ponding stations and so forth, and um, we rely on all of them very much. They're part of our safety, they're part of our uh, neighborhoods being able to be safe uh, and safer, uh, those sort of things. So it was excellent to hear about some of what you plan on tackling. Uh, funding is a perennial issue, so being able to leverage federal funds as much as possible is incredibly important. It's excellent that you have plans there. Training of staff is always really important and that should always be also ongoing. Um, making sure that we have maintenance standards in place. I think all of us in the community would be uh, very grateful to be seeing those um, be updated or implemented and, and having them followed. Um, and the list goes on and on of uh, all the important things that you plan on tackling. So of those many things, um, I'd like to ask, and maybe it's a bit difficult because there are so many needs, but do you, do you see some priorities there? Like what would be your top three priorities, would you say? I think the top priority is, is it's always going to be funding. Um, you know, uh, I, like I said, having been there at DOA, uh, funding is an issue for every single GovGuam department, and we really need to think smarter, think larger, and, and look at, uh, at additional resources. Um, we can't just rely on local resources anymore. We have to go look at private grants. We have to go look at federal grants. Uh, we need to go and talk to our counterparts um, in, in the federal government and see and, and really just just squeeze them for every penny that we can get and every penny that we believe is, is due us. So that, that, that's number one. Um, number two, I, I think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really important that, that we, we, we look at our, our current government facilities. Um, and when I say facilities, I, I mean our government buildings, our, our, our government roads, and specifically back to our government buildings. We, we are spending a lot, um, probably in the millions, of rental out there. Um, the, 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 the previous legislature that we were in when I was director, um, I think for the 21 or 22 years that we were in there and all the rental, we spent maybe about $12 million in rental. Uh, that, that's a lot of money. We could have re renovated this place two times over. Yeah, this, this cost us seven, seven, eight, uh, eight million to, to renovate. So there's a lot of, you know, and, and trust me, that's on the governor's table. That's, that's, that's on her uh, to-do list uh, to, to, to get the government agencies concentrated in one area, if you will, as opposed to being spread out all over the place and, and, and rented in, in uh, 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 a lot of private buildings. You know, a lot of the, the private uh, sector folks probably won't, won't appreciate it, but, you know, um, we're spending a lot of money in, in buildings that we don't own. And we really should have one central area for the government. Uh, so those are, those are probably my two top issues. And then, of course, you know, public works, as, 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 as uh, um, expanded as we are throughout the entire island, we've got we've to look at our natural resources. That is huge. We have a, we have a compliance issue coming down uh, uh, based on the Clean Water Act. And that has to do with all the outfalls, all the rivers, uh, outfalls from... Uh, ponding basins from the roadways and things like that. So we have to address that via a, an updated storm management uh, program, stormwater management program and plan. It's very good to hear that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that you're tying in, you see the tie-ins in the work that you're doing and how uh, connected it is to our environment because yes. that is, uh, that's important to all of us uh, in maintaining uh, our environment. It's part of our Guam brand. It's uh, an part, important part of the Chamorro culture and um, the way that our community lives. And so um, it's important to see those tie-ins because, you know, I, you as a government agency, DPW, ha can have very big mm -hmm. impact on that environment. And I have oversight over the Hagatnya Re, uh, Restoration Redevelopment mm. Authority. And so I very much support uh, 
being able to bring back in as many agencies as possible. And I've been speaking with the administration as well about some of the buildings um, in Hagatnya, constructing some of them, uh, but also maybe looking at the landscape as how we might be best using some of the buildings that are here. And so uh, I, I think that is a direction that we'll all be moving in and that we're gonna see some real progress on that. Um, and while you've been in place, so you've been able to be in place for a few months now, uh, granted that some of them you were doing your on island, I mean, excuse me, your online research um, in Hawaii. But what initiatives have you been able to put in place or at least uh, initiatives that you've started maybe in the list that you've mentioned? Uh, if we could hear a little bit about the ones that you've started putting into place. I, I think uh, one of the um, huge initiatives I, I did um, just at the start there is to get an inventory of what we own. What does is, what is Public Works own? What does the government of Guam own in terms of equipment, vehicles, um, cars, trucks, things of that nature? Um, that's number one, so that we can, we can get a handle on all that. Uh, number two, what kind of human resources and professional, um, professional resources do we have within the, within the department? Right now, uh, a number of our, our, our tasks are, are done by, by consultants. Um, if, you, if you recall, many, many years ago, I, I believe, as I understand, DPW had a, a, a workforce of well over 1,000. We are down to about 270 today. Uh, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the um, work is contracted out. A lot of the work just doesn't get done because we just don't have enough people. So the, the two uh, initiatives that I did was to, and I'm, I'm still doing that, is just to get an idea of where do we stand today? What are our resources, both in terms of human resources, professional resources, contractual resources, um, funding resources, and, and, uh, and logistical resources? Because DPW is highly logistical. Um, uh, and sad to say, we've got uh, some uh, quite, quite a high number of heavy equipment that, that's, that's down. Um, they're they're, they're non-functioning, so we've got, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I've got one, I've got two individuals, just nothing but bird-dogging every single procurement there is to get these, these, these pieces of equipment back up. Uh, we're not going to wait until July or August, because like, like I said, I've been down at DOA. I know how most, if not all, the departments work. They wait until the end of the fiscal year. They look at, are they going to have lapses, or do they have funds to spend, and all of a sudden, all the requisitions go down to GSA for, for purchase orders. That's just not the way I run. Uh, we, we, will, we will spend our money today uh, and throughout the fiscal year. So, Joe um, those are uh, really important. Um, I'm like-minded in that when I get into an area, the first thing I want to do is really understand the landscape so mm -hmm. that we have a sure footing and understanding about how to move forward and where the gaps are that need to be worked on. So the one uh, other thing that I'll ask about is, um, in addition to having issues with the school busing and so forth, I've been hearing that there are some issues with having enough bus shelters and that sometimes those processes have been really, really lengthy, that certain neighborhoods or certain areas need bus shelters and yet here they are still waiting five years later. So. We really want to ensure the safety for those children. We really want to ensure that they're not out standing out there in the sun or the rain. Um, have you been able to tackle some of that, or what are your, some, uh, some of your plans for the bus shelters? Yes, we have about 620 bus shelters that are out there. Um, we have an additional 100 pickup sites without bus shelters. So we need another 100 bus shelters. Uh, probably to get over the 720, 730 limit. Um, again, uh, a, a good number of that is funding. A good number of that is community partnerships. I think uh, I, I have a lot of business friends. I know there's a lot of businesses out, out there probably just waiting to be asked. Uh, we also have the GCC uh, uh, Academy up there. We have the Trades Academy. We need, we need to get into partnerships with them. If we can buy the materials, perhaps, or we can get partnerships with... Uh, um, say some of the hardware stores to, for contributions 
lumber contributions, we give it to GCC or the Trades Academy, they will build it, we put them out there. Uh, th there's, there's all kinds of resources that we need to explore. Um, uh, we can't just wait for the general fund or the Guam Highway Fund or federal funds. We need to, like I, I keep saying, uh, we got to think outside the box and, and be a little bit more aggressive in, um, in, in, in tackling a lot of these issues. That's very good. Um, government, the way that the federal government and our local governments have to operate these days is to leverage what we can. And I think it's so important to have that community stakeholdership. It's mm -hmm. too easy to uh, separate them and to sit back and, and not see ourselves as being associated with being part of the solution, but also just needing to be part of it. Um, I'm a strong believer in uh, community service by our, our youth and our community members because we, we can't keep the entire island clean like we need to be working together. Um, so this is slightly different uh, island clean, but it fits in with where you're going, the model that you're working mm -hmm. on also. Uh, but it can also create some proactivity um, being embedded in our minds with that stakeholdership. I just wanted to mention as well, and maybe you have already started this or this has already been a practice, but um, the military with the military buildup and their lengthy presence here, I see them as being able to provide some real support in your um, seeking federal funds that they could be making it known that they have a strong support, that that's part of their mission here because they are heavy users of the roads. Mm -hmm. So if that's not already in place, I'm sure that they would be um, very supportive of providing you that support uh, and really strengthen that appeal to the federal government. Yes, uh, yes ma'am. Uh, we do have one road paving, paving project that uh, we are in discussions with uh, the military here. Um, I believe they use the road more than we do and so we're trying to get them to have some skin in the game and, and give us some money to, to help pave that road in, in addition to other federal funding and, and, uh, and the like. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're working with them, but on the other side, we're also working with them as, as community partners to, um, to, to, to beef up the resources of uh, the, the department. Sidious Masi, okay. so uh, thank you for thank you very much, your Senator. time, and I will turn yeah. it over to our chair. Thank you very much, uh, Senator. Vince, and a who bottom zoo guinea, eh? Guasumangonu Nagua be down muni, debit you matunguni tautauta, and this dune harlum zone may comfort me. There's some, there's something that's very spectacular that you did for the short, uh, short uh, term that you've been acting uh, director. Can you give us, can you elaborate on that, Barry? I, I, uh, uh, not, not just as, as, as acting director, but uh, in, in my previous uh, term here as, as director here at, at the legislature, and, and not to be coy about it, but uh, you are sitting in it, <laughs> you are working in it, and we are operating it, and, and this is the Guam Congress building. Uh, it took us four or five years to get this rehabilitated and renovated. This, this stood empty for well over 20 years. This was home to a lot of pigeons and some of the home, homeless people. And frankly, frankly, Senator, it, it was a dis disgrace. Uh, it was a disgrace to the previous legislatures who I actually worked here, my father included. Uh, he was the speaker here at the time, uh, two-term speaker. And uh, it, 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 it's a proud, it was a very proud moment to reopen this, this institution. And it, it, it's a wonderful facility for the people of Guam to use, yourselves included. And uh, I'm, I'm very proud to have been a part of that. Was a Tatiana Stabazu gets Mark Forbes. The Stabogi, how good, how good director the legislature is there. Can I cut a deer? Gage Yogi Tetsu. Can I cut a deer? Guabidadam, by Minali. The, you know, and a Manusian Stabo, and a Filipinas, and be some of Pedro Tatalo, a coffin of Nello, and a Masangani, and a Maconio para Hawaii, Nuha. Ilelikuliku, 
Lani pedia lai fatin na sejam ni kusa. Maulik na tau tau. I just want to thank you again, Vince, for taking the challenge because your challenge is among us, man. I'm telling you, public works actually does the bulk of the work, not only in this government, but also in the districts. So I, I thank you very much for taking that challenge. I am sure that you're going to do a good job with DPW, as DPW director, and I believe it's one of the most challenging positions in Governor Guam, and that you're, you're very capable in leading the agency to meet the missions of the people and the mission of our island. The Committee on Public Safety, Border Safety, Military and Veterans Affairs, Marriage Council Infrastructure, and Public Transit has duly heard the executive appointment of Vince Ariola to serve as the Director of the Department of Public Works. And written testimony may, may be submitted via email to my email, Senator Pido at Senator PJ, ITP Pido JNA. So, simply go on the last thing we said, JPU, simply right? <laughs> dot com. Or maybe hand delivered to my office within 10 days at Bridgepoint Buildings uh, Suite 202 140 Espinal Avenue, Haganya. But to be clear, because a lot of people will call my office, Manu Nagaigi Fisinamu, because there's no sign saying this is upstairs, is Peter's office. For Zangin Unupusi Post Office, Mano zoom pay red light, right? It's the yellow na building, guy give the second floor. Mas klaro yun zoom ke tisina yung seda ay 140 Aspinall Avenue. I can guarantee that. This confirmation hearing is now adjourned, and the time is. Senator, if 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 I may, I just 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 have one more comment. And my good friend Peter Roy Martinez. I have to disagree with you. He, he mentioned that I was patient. That, that was like 20 years ago. <laughs> Not anymore. I am the most impatient guy there is. I, uh, I don't like slow. I don't like slow traffic. I don't like slow cooking. I don't like slow people. So I like to move on things. I like to move very fast. And, uh, so, and that's, that's just the way I operate now. Um, and then lastly, I would like to, I, I hope he's here, my little brother. Jay, happy birthday. Again, I saw him. I saw him. Well, he might be in court. Happy birthday. <laughs> but I, I have to agree with you, like Vince. The older you get, eh, the more impatient you get. Absolutely. Right? You huh? bet. <laughs> we're in the same, we're in the same uh, uh, status in that one. And like I said, uh, it's about 9.50 right now. And don't forget, uh, you can send your testimony, written testimony to my office. And uh, congratulations. Thank you, Lai Vince. That's how I don't talk about Lai Vince. Na usually, na when I do my public confirmation hearing, right? Tibay faisin ni senidor pun mabota, bay taugo.